three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Rad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. We're new, really branded, rebranded as the magicbradshow.com. And I've got a, a fellow magi here, and we're going to have an interesting conversation about magic. <laughs> Are you there? Is he here? Oh, he's, yeah, he's, I was just plugging in, I was plugging in my headphones. <laughs> readjusting his headsets. I just, you've got all that technology behind you because you're the yeah. younger generation. I'm 63 <laughs> and I just got my earbud. I stick up here as a lavalier mic, <laughs> little standby. <laughs> yeah, it's simple um, for me. Well, I do it for different reasons too. You know, like I have a, I, I can run a stream off my Mac too. Like I have a setup for that, but this is like the home base. And in case NASA needs help with satellites, they can call me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I get it, but my brain gets fried with that kind of stuff, you know, with some of the Yeah. It gets easier the more you do it, you know, it's like anything else. Kind of, but you know, I don't even want to get into it because I know that it could, the more cogs in the machine you put in there, like you, you see all these little switchers and microphones and Oh, I got man, all of it. Too much to me, man. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have everything that you're saying you don't want to get involved with, I have in front of me at this moment. Are you like a music guy, too? <laughs> uh, I listen to it, but don't ask me to make music. Don't ask ever, me to draw. Did you ever been in the studio? Instrument. We got them soundboards. Oh, yeah. There's like 165 million knobs on there and switches mm -hmm. and channels. Yep. And uh, I, crazy. I have a small version of that over here. I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. there's my little soundboard. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I have voice changers. <laughs> $9. I don't get too much into technology. Now, you're out on the East Coast, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, New York City. New York. New York. Like I was saying, I like out there because they tell you like it is, and that's how it is. It's, uh, yeah, and, and, and we don't have water. We have water and coffee. Water. And then uh, you got... Uh, the Midwest, where they don't make a freaking decision. That's us, Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's just, most places, to be honest. Uh, I get frustrated sometimes when I travel because people can't even make a decision to go around a car that's stopped. Like, just go around it, you know? Like, you don't have to wait. Yeah. You just go. <laughs> I've seen people stop at escalators. They're, they're making a decision. You know, would you get yeah. out of the way because there's people coming down? <laughs> <laughs> and in California, they uh, make decisions for you, but they're not always really uh, straight up with what they're doing out there. So that's the East Coast to the West Coast. That's the United yeah. States for you. So we're going to have this little conversation about the expose and the revelation of magic and the mm -hmm. secrets of magic. Because back when I was a kid, um, we kind of had this uh, the thing where you never tell the secret. And uh, you know, you, the people thought, how do you learn magic if no one's going to tell the secret? Well, you learn from books, you learn from mentors, you sort of apprentice, you make up your own stuff. But these days, and that's how this conversation got started, I go on to TikTok and there's people revealing mm -hmm. magic left and right. And then I threw that but, thing up on the Facebook group and that's how this conversation started. And I'm excited to have it because I'm confused. Yeah, I'm excited to have it too, mostly because I get upset when I see people talking from a place where they don't know. They, they're just angry about something they don't understand, and they don't even want to try to listen to the other side. It's, this is my way, this is how I've known it, and that's it. And um, That's life these days with politics and everything. They're so yeah. far in one space, they're just stuck in it, and they can't find the middle ground anymore. Yeah, and, and even with, I mean, not to get too much into the politics, but I get, you know, I live in a place where a lot of the things people are seeing now is what I grew up with. So it's nothing new to me. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing that people don't are not willing to believe that something that isn't happening to them or something they don't know about is true. And it's the same thing with this. There's a whole different side of whatever we want to call what we do. Art, craft, magic, passion, whatever it is, right? And I could go into how this all started, but I came to a point where I realized that I don't own magic. It is not my property, right? Yeah. Nobody does. There's no temple that we have to go to and collect stones in order to build a sword that allows us to become a Jedi master. There is none of that. 
magic is a product and it has been a product for decades. And the reason why it's a product is because it's sold. We sell shows, we sell lectures, we sell classes, we sell, you know, products, books, videos. It's a product. Agreed. Right? So with any product, eventually you want to get more customers. So to get more customers, you have to give something away. That is, that is a key marketing tool. There, there is that. The, the, there. the difference for me with all this is it's mm -hmm. done in the public forum and the internet. That's right. Is a global public forum. And, Absolutely. And even if it's, aside from the exposing part, if you get down to the core of it, what if you, before you perform the trick, you expose the trick, then perform the trick? Kind of like a comedian saying the punchline before he gives the, the joke. Or I have. when you give a gift to someone, you don't wrap it. You just give them the gift unwrapped. Well, the gift is a different thing, right? Um, kind of, but the magic is lost when all of a sudden it's like, you know. That's not true. That's, that's not true. It's not true. Really? Not true at all. I if, if you're good enough, and this is the key, if you're good enough at pulling people in, you can literally show them how to do a trick do it in front of them, and they'll still be amazed. Um, I would somewhat agree. Uh, maybe uh, even uh, amazed by the, the ability of the, you know, the, the, the effect. physical skill. The effect. One time I was hanging out with a friend. I'm not going to name his name. Um, but we were having this argument. And he goes, let me show you how much it doesn't matter. And he pulled out a little thing of floss he opened it up as he's talking to the person he does this breaks it off now it's it's invisible elastic thread right in front of the person he's talking to them goes around his hand ties it does this says hand me your straw does this and the person was amazed he literally tied it pulled it out did it all in front of him with all the aside from looking like a complete idiot the person didn't care right because it's what we bring attention to so, so was that magic, spectator then looking at that straw going, that's really cool how that is up there. And I can't, they, see fl they flipped like out it. and they flipped out and dropped their drink. So did, were they fooled or did he they, say, I've got some invisible thread here? Cause he didn't say, Keller he, he, did that he, thing with invisible thread for a while. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, they, they, there. they, he didn't, he didn't go through the, the technical aspects of what he was doing. He was just doing it, but you know, it, it, it's, it's something like, you know, we're, where this motion, if you ever see a magician do this, you know what they're doing, right? Okay. They're doing this, right? We all know what that is. All right. But he built that before. <laughs> he, he tied well, it I and agree. everything. I've seen that done before. I've seen people re-rig like the, the Judy mouse or the, yeah. the magic mouse. And, yeah. and, and here's, here's the other part of it. And this is the part that people fail to realize about the internet. Whatever we think is a secret is already out there. I know that's kind of my point. Right? And but I, but here's the real point. How many people are looking for it? Right? I can learn how to fix my car for free online. Yes. My mechanic isn't complaining. In fact, he gets more business when he teaches stuff online. I helped him put together a little series on basic maintenance of your car and he gets more business now. Mhm. Mm right it's a different animal though it's it's the same animal because how many people are really looking at how to how to learn magic well a person that wanted to know they saw a guy with the centavos and a half dollar and decided he wanted to know how it works so he would go and he put the centavos half dollar magic trick and then he goes oh that's the one that's the one that's the one mm -hmm. oh cool i know how that works and then they go to the bar and go hey do that trick again that one with the and they just sure call yeah, it out that, but that happens and that happens when people would walk into magic shops and buy the tricks you know the, that's the, the difference though they walk into a magic shop no here's the a, different the, the difference right people care about is a dollar right the difference between exposure and a product is is monetary and that makes no sense to me if you go to magic shops like murphy's like penguin right these online magic shops i can give them my email they give me five free tricks 
for free. But nobody complains about that. Nobody that's complains. Because that's because it's within the, the realm of the magic store. But who Another, decides that? It's a, but it's not a secret store. No, it's I not. Can a, look up, <laughs> I can look up magic tricks, penguin magic pops up. That's not a secret. That's not a private thing. That is I, a I business. I agree. Right? And this is the thing that people are missing, right? I own a magic company. My company is Lost Art Magic. I'm in the same business that all it's these other companies. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You know, but it's it's a business. They're not in the business of magic for art. They're in the business of magic for business. People okay. who perform and buy magic tricks are not in the business for art most of the time. They are in the business of figuring out what tricks they can do that are commercial, that are easy reset, that are fooling, that have a good reaction, that are commercial, business, money, not art. Oh, I'll, I'll agree with that. I mean, there's the performer, then there's the dealer, and there, sure. there used to be the retailer. Mm -hmm. there, there used to be the manufacturer and the retailer. They used to be mm -hmm. sacred, but now anybody can get it. Just go to Fun Inc. and you got it yourself. There's also the, um, the uh, lecturer that teaches. So I, I lecture. There's a lot of different elements of all this stuff, but yeah, sure. I kind of get to the essence of, aren't we kind of robbing people of it by exposing it? Like my wife does not want to see the secret. Then she doesn't have to look it up. No, but if I show but, it to her and, and she goes, also oh, that's, that's how. But that's your choice. She's not actively, specific? she's not actively looking for it. Well, that's right? what happens when I'm on YouTube and I'm looking up marketing videos and a magic one pops up because I'm a magician and all of a sudden this guy shows me this thing and sometimes I'm going cool now I got another effect but people yeah. can ju also just stumble upon it yeah but so what people can stumble upon how to make great but, dishes and restaurants aren't closing because of it you know different. like it's the same it's I the don't... same the the thing is we think that because the, the access is there that people are getting it. And that's not true. That's not how the internet works. Everybody's been on Facebook. Every single one of us has been on Facebook or Amazon or whatever. And we look up something on Google and the next time we're on that site, we see an ad. So let's say right now I'm talking to you and I decide I wanna search playing cards. The next time I jump on Facebook, there's going to be an ad for playing cards. There's not going to be an ad for all season tires. It goes by your trends. It goes by your habits online. Yeah, that true. is how the internet works. It doesn't just randomly throw stuff at you that doesn't fit the equation. No, but once you did cards, you can get closer to card tricks, and then you can get closer that's, to other but that's, tricks. But that's just coins. an example. But that's just an example. And, it, and the metrics go much deeper than what I'm saying. And, yeah, and you know, so just because you happen to look up cards, that doesn't mean that you're going to get card tricks. But it's the very thing, possible that you will, whether you want it or not. Yeah. And it's possible you can go to the library and find a book that says how to do tricks for dummies. You know what I mean? Like this stuff is already out there. Yes, you there, can it, find it. Yeah. But, but don't you think that you're kind of, taking the magic away from people by exposing it to them? No? How many people have been exposing magic on YouTube for, how long has YouTube been around? Well, Over a since, decade? since the internet, they've been doing it for a long time, but that's kind of what I'm getting at is I, I'm sort of pre-internet. I was involved with Netscape where it was, but it was more there's still, then. There's still magic shows. There's still lectures. There's still conventions. There's still products the, the market hasn't changed there is but magic shows and i'm also not a big fan of magicians performing and then selling magic in the back of the room either they're a performer or they're a dealer maybe but they should stay in the, the lane those are your rules sure that I'm is that suggesting. is no no i get it but that is your rule, right? But that doesn't mean your rule is the rule. Just because you feel magic shouldn't be exposed doesn't mean that other people shouldn't get magic, right? There are places in the world where if it wasn't for the videos that I've done or, or some of the other guys, they would have never gotten into it. 
some of us have helped create magicians where there was where there was no market, there was no magic shop, there was no magic club. Different countries globally, but we're so wrapped up in our feeling about this thing that we don't own that we feel we have the right to deny people based on they have to pay they have to go to a magic club they have to buy a book they have to get a mentor based on the rules that the generation before lived by we're in 2020 everything is different they can access it from just a different source that's right now the the big difference is The big difference is I'm not teaching magic on YouTube. I'm teaching tricks. I'm teaching moves. There's nobody in their right mind who can say that they are teaching magic on YouTube, on a video, without having the other person in front of them to coach them. Well, I I get it. You're making a good case and stuff, but uh, I still, I think when you learn the secret, it takes a lot out of the magic trick. Did it do it for you? At times, a little mm-hmm. deflated. I'll give you an example. I, uh, well, uh, years ago, I bought the haunted pack. You know what that is? Absolutely. When I got it, I was kind of disappointed because it wasn't as cool as I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, because it was just a stupid card with a stupid thing on it. Yeah. Right? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And then they came out, remember the Viper so, deck? The so, $300 three-card so version? If he would have showed me that before, I probably wouldn't mm-hmm. have bought it. Because I wouldn't Maybe. be impressed. Maybe. Or you would have said, wow, that's actually amazing that it's so simple and does something so amazing, which mm-hmm. happens as well. There's, there's more than just what we think. I get that. You know what I mean? So I get why... now. I've had people go, well, you know, it's not your material. It's not this. It's not that. It's not blah, 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 right? And I get that. I get to a degree. Because if I'm selling a product, like, for instance, I re- do you know Ray Cosby's Ray's Rise? No. Okay. It's a super hard, uh, ambitious card that uses the, the uh, well, I forgot the guy's name, something riser, his ambitious riser move. And basically... Let me get a deck. I'll show you real quick. Can you explode it? <laughs> I sell it. <laughs> okay. So, real quick. So, basically, what's happening is uh, card goes into the bottom. I'm not going to do the whole routine, right? Oh, boy. I did this wrong. Okay. Card goes into the bottom. I give it a little shake. It rises up a little bit. Then I give it another shake, it rises up a little bit more, and then you could go up to the top and it rises that way too, right? Whatever. Cool. So it's, 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 it's a slighty move, slighty, tricky move, right? I didn't create it. Guy in the 70s created it. I think his name is Henry, Henry Riser. Harry, oh, I forgot the guy's name. I haven't said this stuff in Doesn't so long. Matter. Ray, Cos- matter Ray Cosby took the move and created a slew of routines with this move. One of them was Ray's Rise. He came up with pack jacks, like a bunch of different things. And he put it out in Impossible Card Magic that Richard Kaufman um, was the host of on the video, on the VHS tape. Impossible Card Magic of Ray Cosby. Okay. I learned the trick after a decade. Ray saw me do it. He let me re-release it. And so now it's, it's under my name. The things that I've added are different than what the original thing was. But the essence of the trick is the same. It uses the same basic move, and it uses the same ideas to get into it. Those are not mine. Why do I have the right to sell that, but I don't have the right to let other people know what it is, where it came from, where they could learn more for free? I think it's a gentleman's agreement that you have the right. I mean, you could say that this stuff is all created by God, so nobody owns any of it. So if I want to steal Prince's music, I can do it because it's not his. Well, I don't, I don't bring religion into it at all because this has zero to do with religion. It has to do with the actions of individual people, not the actions of a higher being or of a lower being or of anything. It's a market. It's well, all even so, I could say that I had that idea too. Correct. So I, I read it in a book and I go, oh, that's, yeah, that makes sense to me. It's my idea. Sure. 
Like so, but, but, that, but that's not my question. My question is why is it okay for me, why is it okay for me to reteach and sell it, but not give it away? I think because it, uh, it's in the, that close uh, community of people, and I think giving it away, or, or I wouldn't say give it away, but exposing it ruins it for the person that just wants to watch the magic and enjoy it. What defines the group of people? What makes a magician a magician? Person that keeps secrets. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> just, Bullshit. Just tease it. Half of the magicians that, that, that complain the most about exposure have the most products on the market. Well, that's a different thing. Selling magic is different than performing magic, and it's also different but, than revealing magic, and it's different than watching magic. It's all a market. It is all a market. Some people don't do products, they just consult. They charge for the right to, t they charge for that ability. Some people perform, they charge for that ability. Some people teach, they charge for that. Some people create, they charge for that. So what about the people that don't charge and they just give it away because they just want to give it away? Well, the thing is, it's, this is the thing, right? What determines value? Is it money? Is it perception. time? Is it effort? It is perception. So here's my perception. The people that I'm teaching online are literally following me on a journey and they're learning stuff and they're telling me and they're updating me and they're into it. And some people just stop by for whatever. Some people come by for longer. Some people come from other channels. Some people came from the magic community and left because they thought it was too toxic because they would go to a magic club. They have PTSD because they were in a war. They don't want to perform, but the magic club won't let them in unless they perform and they have to pay for that right. So there's a lot of demographics of people that are online that people don't think exist because to them, the only magic community is the one they know of. Oh, I totally get that. I mean, there's a whole another conversation about the magic clubs and whether they're the, all that, you know? Yeah, which I, I actually did a, a lecture for the SAM Parent Assembly, the first one uh, out here in New York. And I had that discussion with them. I said, what is, your, what is your purpose? What do you gain and what do they gain? You know, like, and it, <laughs> a fight broke out between the members, but that's... Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it, yeah. to me, the SAM is for all the old guys to do something and get away from the wife, and the IBM is for all the young kids to learn some new stuff. Well, that's <laughs> how you see it, except the young guys say that the SAM is for the old guys and the IBM is for the old guys. <laughs> the other <Right>? old guys. <laughs> the other old guys, different, you know? Or, or they, they, they join both so that they get two days off from their wife. Sure. Right? So... There's a, a guy in California. His name is um, Jeremy Griffith. He goes by the name Los Angeles on Instagram, right? And he started a thing a bunch of years back called Monday Night Jams. And basically, it was just a restaurant that they would hang out at, and then you would buy some food, and they would just jam and hang out. And it went from four people to 20 to 50 to 80 people, more than most magic clubs. Mm -hmm. They don't charge. They bring lecturers in. They hang out. They share ideas. They work on stuff. They help each other out, and they do it all for free. Yep. What I, I benefit that. is that compared to a magic club that meets once a month? They charge you money. They talk for 45 minutes about money. They do crappy magic for 15 minutes, and then they kick you out. At least that's how <laughs> it is in New York. <laughs> that's how it is in Minneapolis, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? So who cares? Why should I do that? When I can do this every week, I'm in contact with the people, we share ideas, we work on stuff, and none of us takes anything from anybody except the experience. Well, I think some of it might be, again, personal preference. They want to be within some kind of organizational sure. thing. They like to do broken wand ceremonies when somebody kicks and all that kind of stuff. Sure. They like they're part of something. Sure, that's going to happen. They've, but they've also spawned magicians. They've had people that were in the restaurant that saw what was going on, and people would start hanging out. They got exposed. Mm -hmm for free i get it right so it's it's literally the difference between internet versus in person money versus free that's the big problem that everybody seems to have well my, my problem with it is again when you reveal the secret i think it diminishes sure. the value of the the, the awe sort of it's sort of like uh, santa claus is your dad well thanks i don't i thought sure. santa was kind of cool 
but people still believe in Santa Claus because they haven't heard that yet. Thumb tips still work because not everybody knows what a thumb tip is. The invisible deck still works, even though uh, the, the, scam the gimmicks do. Gave but, it away. but I think sometimes they see some of these things and it kind of gives them an idea and it sort of did, I believe, that it diminishes the value of the actual magic. And but that's, that's the assumption. But these things are still around for a reason. People know the Chinese linking rings have a, a freaking hole in it. They know. So what happened? They started developing rings with smaller holes, with the magnetic ones and latches and all this other stuff to try to diminish that. But at the end of the they day, got innovative, yeah. But at the end of the day, the regular rings still work and fool people. They didn't diminish anything. Do they fool the, the people that know that there's a hole in the ring? Sometimes. Then, then they look at it from the art. It's amazing how that person can conceal that big gap. That's, but again, that is your assumption. Well, right? all I can give you is my assumption. <laughs> but that's my, my point. Friend. That's my point. The whole argument people have about exposure on the internet is assumption. It's the assumption that it's hurting something. It's the assumption that it's ruining something. It's the assumption that it's destroying it when it's not. You really it's think not it's doing not. any of that. I know it's not. There, I have, not, not to burst my own bubble, okay, but I have been to, or is that the right word? Pat myself on the back? Let's use pat myself on the back. Yeah, um, don't want not, to, <laughs> not to pat myself on the back, right? But there have been people, I'm not going to throw numbers out there, that have started going to conventions because they saw my video about conventions, and they saw that because they started doing magic from the video that taught them how to do magic, and they wanted to get more into it. Sure. Is that I, I a believe bad it. thing? No, I, I believe, I understand that, that it's propagating and creating more magicians and giving more exposure. I mean, that's kind sure. of like what television did all of a sudden. It wasn't done in theaters. It was done broadcast television with Doug Henning and Mark Wilson. Yep. More people saw about it. So, yes, but... Blackstone was selling magic kits publicly. Blackstone gave away magic in cereal boxes, taught magic, world's greatest magic, taught magic. There was a, a booklet that a magician gave away in the 40s, I believe, that taught people tricks. It was these little flip booklets, you know, like those old, you remember the cartoons you would draw on a post-it pad and flip through it and it would make yeah. animation? It was like that. Okay, I guess another been, part of it is that it's so easy to see how something works just going on YouTube and there it is. Yeah, but that's anything. But that's anything, right? Well, kind of. You got to buy the cereal and find, get, get it out of the box and get the directions, or you got to buy the magic kit, or you got to go to the library to get the book. Listen, the, listen, when I was a kid and I wanted a toy in a cereal box, I would go into the cereal box and get the toy in the supermarket. Okay. If there's a will, there's a way. There, <laughs> sure, there is. You know what I mean? Like the, the grand assumption is that us as individuals have the ability to destroy magic. Uh, magic Secrets Exposed taught magic to a grand audience on television. And guess what? People were still getting booked for shows. People were still doing tricks. The magic market still thrived. Nothing changed. Okay. Nothing. World's Greatest Magic taught magic on, on, on television. Nothing changed. My friend Chris Ramsey has over 4 million subscribers on YouTube ex teaching magic sometimes. Nothing but, has changed. Well, it does make some sense. So then... Everything's fine. We can keep on going status quo and uh, we don't want to flip it over and go the other direction and just say, let's just expose magic. Let's not perform it. Let's just do the, do the but show. The why, why is, why is performing the pinnacle of magic? Oh, well, <laughs> unless you can just do it in front of a mirror. You want to, yeah. you want to entertain someone else. Mm -hmm. I think that's part do of you? it. Do you? Maybe you do. See, this is this is the thing, right? There well, are wait creators. a minute now. So do you just do this by yourself, and you're not going to even do it in front of a camera, so nobody can see it? I did a. Uh, I did. A, I'm going to answer that right now. I did a podcast. <laughs> I did a podcast, and somebody said this came up. They're like, they're like, well, if you're doing magic for yourself, it's like masturbating. You go, yeah. I masturbate because it feels good. I don't masturbate for you. Some people do things for themselves. Some people like doing things for themselves. Some people do it for therapy. They don't do it for a, an audience. And that's okay. Some people create and so just want to make tricks that somebody else does. That's okay. 
So let me ask you this. When you're in front of the mirror and you're magic baiting. <laughs> I, I use a camera, by the way, high def 4K. But you're in front of the mirror with the camera. <laughs> Do you fool yourself? You want to know something? That's how I've created tricks. You fooled yourself with your own double lift. I Not necessarily a double lift, but something I was playing with. Sure. Yeah. Or an ITR or something. You go, oh my God, the thing is floating. I didn't realize that it was hooked up to an ITR. No, that's, that's a little different. But, you know, you can look at something and go, I didn't know that was possible. Or I didn't see it that way before. Or blah, 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 blah. That's part of the process, too. Sorry. Echo, shut up. I'm sorry. That's my Amazon Echo. <laughs> Would you like to buy something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I disconnected that real quick. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, we, we put the emphasis on performing when, frankly, there are more bad performers than good performers. There are people performing who, frankly, oh, are terrible at it. But they're going, this is what we need to be here. So what's the range? Should we all be David Copperfield, Chris Angel, Shin Lim, Dynamo, Cyril? Should we all be the the bot mitz from bar mitz for worker? Should we all be the the corporate worker? Oh, well, there's definitely the a spectrum. Definitely there is a spectrum. spectrum. So there's got to be a spectrum with the interest of magic too. The interest can range from performing to creating to dabbling to thinking and 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 theorizing. There's a spectrum, and that's if, if, if it's okay for one spectrum, then the other spectrum has to be okay too. So this has been a really interesting conversation, and what I've kind of come up with is it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. If magic is supposed to be a gift, then let people appreciate that gift the way they want to appreciate it. Whether they're a spectator or a magician. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose. It's interesting. I mean, it's, it's definitely different. I mean, going and just doing shows to expose all the effects, it'd be kind of a weird thing. That's, but that's not in. what people are doing. Um, I've seen it. They, yes. they literally go on YouTube, watch YouTube, to, to then buy tickets to a show to ruin the show. No, they just do the, they just do the show, do the tricks on YouTube and just to show them. There's yeah, a I do couple, that. yeah. So I, that's what I'm saying. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And some people make a living reacting to it. Some people make a living that's showing That's true. That's cards. their job is to go, that was amazing. Yeah. Some people make a living opening a deck of cards and talking about it, even though it goes through the same process as every other deck of cards. Sure. You, you know what I mean? It's a different dynamic it's a different thing there's a this is a, a different market there are, it's a different community and what i was trying to do for a long time was trying to mix those communities i would tell the online community about the i guess magic community we know and then i would lecture for the magic community we know and tell them about this other magic community because there's such a huge disconnect i was at, i was doing a live stream at a, at a convention that I was lecturing at in Ohio. And during the live stream, there was a gentleman who was in the stream and, that follows me. And he goes, I live 20 minutes from there. I had no idea there was a magic convention. The guy is 60 years old. He's been living in that area his entire life. How does he sure. not know, as somebody who's dabbled in magic for over 40 years, that this magic convention wasn't around? Well, I can get that. I mean, you can have there's places right around where I live here, and I haven't been there. But they're, they're new places to me, for sure. Right? And Visibility. Day, we used Visibility. to use the yellow pages. You'd go to the magician's magic shop, and you'd find I'm, the I'm old. I'm older than you think. I'm not as young as people make me out to be. I'm older than you think. Okay. You know? As a comparison. <laughs> Less than... Wait, how old did you say you were? 63. Okay. Less than 25 years. There you go. So you know about yellow pages? Yes, I do. I used to get them on the porch every couple of... Every, what, year? Couple and a, of months? And a phone booth. You remember those? <laughs> Yep, phone booth, white pages. Remember, they come come together, the white and yellow pages. Sure, thick too, <laughs> thick. 
Yeah, so I, oh. I'm old. So like I'm I said, I'm here. older than you think. I know what you're what you're talking about. I understand where you're coming from, but I think there needs to be an understanding the other way. There needs to be an understanding of what's really happening on the internet, how the internet works, how social media works, how all of this works, because there just isn't one. There's just anger. There's just anger. There's bickering. There's frankly shit talking you know like in the post you made it so well they're doing it because they just want to ass whooping and stuff like that it's like shut up man you're 70 years old if you try to hit anybody you're going to break your wrist <laughs> okay i hear you i hear you. there's people that have they're very stuck in their their uh space they're stuck and what they do is they do the same crappy shows for years and then they want to get people into the show. So what do they do? They turn to the social media that they hate so much and they post about the shows and they try to get people to, to, to go to the shows. But since nobody cares about what they're saying because they don't do anything of any value online, nobody goes. And then they go, social media is stupid. It's like, no, you just don't know how to use it. Right. And the way to use it, I know that one of them is magic revealed. It's something that people... When well, that's, look that's up new things. They will use that keyword. All right, you want you want me to give you the inside scoop? Here's the scoop. If you want to grow on YouTube, you have to understand what YouTube is. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. Yeah. What do people use YouTube for? There's five key things. Learn how, how to, best of, top five, tutorial. Those are the top five things that are searched for on YouTube by far. Makeup tutorials, mm -hmm. how to fix my carburetor, learn to cook, right? Top five radios. Everybody search these things. If you yeah. want to grow on YouTube, that's what you do. That's part of the equation. Totally so, good. right? So that's part of it. But that doesn't include Instagram. That doesn't include Twitter. That doesn't include TikTok. It's just YouTube. There's different, that's, it doesn't include Facebook. There's different games for different platforms, right? Yeah. And one doesn't necessarily cross over to the other. So what happens is you have a lot of these people who say, uh, I have a show coming up and they post a picture in front of the nursing home that they're going to be performing at. They go, oh, so excited to be performing for Gladstone's nursing home. And, and then like that matters. No one cares, right? <laughs> who cares exactly. if you're performing? Give me something to care about. Give me value in what you're posting. That's the key to social media. And most people don't get that. They think that, that posting six days a week about their kid, their dog, and what they're eating is going to make the show that they're trying to push worth. It's not. I get it. You know? So I understand why people are mad. But instead of talking shit, try to find out. If you don't know why social media is working for you, try to find out why it's working for somebody else. If you want to see if magic is, uh, you know, magic being revealed online is really affecting anything, look at the magic market. Look at shows. Mm -hmm. They're still there. Nobody's losing shows because of a YouTube video. Oh, I totally agree they're not losing shows. But I think that I'd, I'd still uh, think that it's kind of lost a little bit. It's, it's harder than hell to really impress people these days. But Back that's the same thing with movies and books and commercials. It is. It is, that it is. is that, that's why I said it's a, it's a product. That, that's what I mean. Uh, what you're saying, it's, um, it's giving me a different perspective on it, if you will. Sure. In that uh, this is, it, it really doesn't matter. It's just a whole new time that we're in. And... Uh, we're having rioting in the streets and everybody's afraid of a virus and everybody's mad. And some people love Trump and some people hate Trump and some people like the art of magic. Others just want to get some money. I get it. And, so, and some people just want to play around. Sure. So, you know, some people just want to, I've had people ask me to teach them stuff to impress their grandkids. Like they don't want to do shit. There's a new thing I've, I've noticed too, is people are doing the magic effect, but then they're doing something else. That's the expose. That's not real. Like they're taking and squirting <laughs> lemon juice in a bowl of water with batteries and rubbing their finger on it and making a card. I, I don't get it at all. <laughs> that's how I know I'm getting to that age. Right. <laughs> when things are happening, I'll line up going, why would you do that? Well, this we're screwed this next generation right 
I know I'm getting to that point because <laughs> what you're talking about, I'm like, Jesus, what is well, happening? Well, the reason that people do it, I believe, it's kind of like you ever walking down the street and your buddy taps you on your opposite shoulder just to trick you to make you look the other way. Yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. You made sure. me look like an idiot. Now you're yeah, happy, right? Maybe it is. So that's, that's kind of what people want to do is they want to trick you. You know, so like wait, you've so seen that thing on Facebook where they say this happened to me and this guy in the line was tapping my shoulder. He kept tapping, he kept tapping, and then it says more. And people are tapping yeah. on it. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I've fallen for that a bunch of times. Sure, it's fun to play jokes. My friend yeah. that, that owns the Eagle Magic Store, he says it's, it's fun to be fooled, but it's even more fun to be the fooler. That's his thing. For some, some people enjoy the thrill. Some people, you know, I, I was talking to somebody once. I don't know which magicians you're aware of, but. Um, the older ones like Di Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any magicians alive today that you know? <laughs> Shin Lim, Derek Hughes. I, I know Derek Hughes. I hang out with him. Okay. So I was with Garrett Thomas. Do you know who Garrett no Thomas name. is? Okay. And we're, and we're at blaine's office and we're talking and if you've ever hung out with garrett before he leaves wherever he's staying there's like a 15 minute period where he has to pack his pockets of tricks like it's just things going in <laughs> right all over the place here and he's got an entire 30 minute act in each pocket so we're uh, we're talking right and we're talking about uh Wow, why, how, how did I just lose all that? Where was I going with this? What were you saying? Oh, the void. Okay, so we were talking about this, right? And I, had, I was telling him to get on social media because I think Garrett Thomas is a genius. I think he's an amazing creator and thinker. He's an amazing performer and magician. But overall, he's just a, an amazing person, right? Like he's interesting and he's weird and he's dynamic and cool and quirky and all these all these things right that just create garrett and i think people need to see that you know there's no i i always told i always said to him there's no reason why more people nowadays know my name than yours like there's no reason you should have a much bigger pull but he doesn't use social media that much yeah, there's a there's definitely a technique to it. I mean, the reason yeah, that yeah. Ty Lopez is Ty Lopez and Gary Vaynerchuk's Gary Vaynerchuk and all that kind yeah. of stuff. They start to to doing things. And and, and PewDiePie you know, is PewDiePie. Yeah, what's up, bros? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we 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 got to this discussion about this, and he was he he's very much the artist. Right? He's like very artsy in his thinking, and I was like, you know, some people like learning they like the the thing of finding something new and yeah. experiencing that some people don't like to be fooled some people like to be scared some people like the things that some people don't right and with magic some people like performing some people like experiencing and some people like dabbling in the middle right sure. like that's it for them that's what they that's their thing and some people like to build it. They don't do it. They just build it. And some there's other people, people that just like to, like to collect it. it. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and I, I, I think, and I think that's okay. That's, that's, that's fair. You know, I call most magic conventions, uh, glorified flea markets. That's what I call most magic conventions because most How are they glorified? <laughs> because a flea market is just a bunch of tents outside or inside of a church or school. And, Magic conventions rent out places in Vegas and, <laughs> and hotels, okay. and they put up banners, right? <laughs> I see what you're saying, yeah, because I, I produce trade shows here in Minneapolis, so that's, I get that thing. Right, so, so what's the difference between a trade show and a flea market, right? The money you put into it. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. It's just a little vendor show versus an expo versus a trade show versus an right? exposition. Or, yeah. But most, most, I'll never forget this. So I'm going to show you something i did and and the story that goes along with it one second okay so this has been interesting it's kind of shifted my thinking a lot a lot of this stuff my old man thinking so he's uh, i got a, a younger generation guy showing me some different things i was i was, I was entertaining the audience while you're gone i didn't say anything bad about you either 
Uh, it's from New York. I don't know. You wouldn't be the first. It doesn't bother me. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so a bunch of years back, uh, I used to run my company with Eric Jones. I don't know if you know who that is. No. Sounds like uh, uh, he's a he's a black magician from Philly, uh, coin magician. Okay. Um, you know who Chris Capehart is? I know that name. Okay. So, um, so I'm, I'm talking with him because See, I've been kind of out of the whole magic thing. I just kind of, I quit performing no, no. a while ago, so I'm not really on top of the, the new yeah, names and all stuff. It's all good, man. I get it. <laughs> I, I, I understand. Um, so this was about five years ago, six, maybe, maybe longer. And, um, I used to. I still do a lot of the editing for my company, but I would make, I would edit the video, I would film it, then I would author the DVD myself and then send that to a place to get replicated to make the DVD products. And they stopped supporting the software. And then the operating systems would upgrade and you couldn't use the software anymore because it was no longer supported. So I'm telling him this, and I'm like, dude, DVDs are dead. DVDs are dying market. And his, his argument to me was people at the, we need DVDs because what else are we going to sell at a convention? Because people want toys and he's not wrong. He's not wrong. If you talk to any magic company, the word toys is the word, right? Oh, thumb drive. Well, that was one solution, right? Yeah. Now I have a, big backing in computers and technology and i went to school for this stuff so i'm telling him we need to go the, the the path of netflix and youtube and just be streaming he was like well what are we going to sell so i said this What's that? this I'll is a product sure. sure right so you get this you get a code you scratch it off you have your product right you have your video you're saying that uh, you need some kind of physical representation of it. Mm -hmm. You kind of don't. You could just go subscription membership model like Netflix. Well, that's that's a whole different thing. That, you know, this is, you know, m the magic community for some reason is built of people who live in 2020, but think in 1942. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm evidence so, of that, right? <laughs> do you have a Netflix account? I do. Did you complain when you go to a magic convention and the product isn't on a DVD? No. Mm. VHS, Most yes. people did. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, I, I was talking about this with the guys at Penguin Magic, and they eventually started doing it for their lecturers. So, if you lecture for, for Penguin, you get a stack of cards like this, and you can sell them at conventions and stuff. You know, your lecture. Right. So this kind of took off. This became a thing because I, I started it. Now, I'm at Magic Live, okay? I'm at Magic Live, and I had just sold my work on the pass, on the classic pass. I have a lot of work on the classic and cover pass. And that made me a good amount of money. But I'm at Magic Live, and I have my booth set up. I have this. I have an Akito coin box that I was selling and some other things. Right? And these are in a little stand. And I'll never forget this. This was the day I decided I'm never doing another booth at a magic convention again. <laughs> so the first thing that happened was I see a guy coming over and he goes, oh, what does this do? And the guy goes, you push this and it does a thing. And he goes, woo, woo, woo. And people think it's a magic trick and they go, ah. And he goes, I'll take it. And he goes, what does this do? He goes, oh, you know, it pokes you in the nose and people think it's magic. He goes, I'll take two of those. And he comes to my booth. He goes, what's this? I go, it's a, it's a routine. It's a trick. He goes, well, how does it work? I go, oh, you, you scratch it off when you get home, you know, to whatever thing you want to watch it on, and then you practice. He goes, oh, and he puts it down and he goes to the next thing, right? The minute I said practice, it's no longer a product for him. <laughs> and this happened for two hours. And the, 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 the fall of it all was, <laughs> and I hate to, to judge, but it's perspective. A guy who was very heavy set, so heavy set that he couldn't stand for a long period of time. So he has one of those little carts. Mm -hmm. He wheels up to my booth. 
He looks at this stuff and he goes, is that stuff good for walk around? Said, it's not for you, man. I packed everything up and I left. <laughs> I was done. That is the epitome of what the magic community has become. It is a, a useless, empty mantra of people who have no idea what they're even saying anymore. Is this commercial? Is it, is it Walker? Is it good for this? Is it good for that? Most, it, I'm going to say 70, but I think it's closer to 95. 70% of people who go to conventions are not workers. Oh, I would say 95. A lot of them are, um, and, and the questions that they're asking are things to talk themselves out of buying it. So what's the point, man? So what is it we're really affecting? Are we affecting the workers that don't even have the time to pay attention to what's going on in this community anyway? Are we affecting the people who don't do shows but pretend like they do and are mad because other people are getting attention when they think it should be them, even though they're doing nothing to get it? Well, a lot of these things have uh, different lanes of, of elements. I mean, you got your performers, then you got your lay audience that's outside of that. But within the circle of the magicians, you've got your dealers, you got your manufacturers, you got your uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. performers, you got your magicians, magicians. But you also uh, have your hobbyists, your collectors, and, right. and you know what I'm saying? Like the, this, that is the bigger sure. part of the market. You've got the, your card people, you got your prop could, people, you got your illusion people. You, I can tell you off the top of my head how many manufacturers of magic there are because I work with all three of them. Well, there's a lot of um, fake ones now too. Well, I'm not, gotten on rampant. Well, well, yeah, that's, that's a whole different thing. Knockoffs and stuff. Yeah, but that's everything. You know, everything gets yeah. knocked off. Um, but I, I know them. Then there's magic companies. There's the retailers. There's the creators. But the people who are buying the stuff that keeps the magic community the magic market, a thing, barely perform. They're collectors, they're enthusiasts, oh, I, I they're agree. hobbyists, right? And these are the people that are complaining the most. And, you, you know, oh, I forgot what that alert is. Oh, well. Um, uh oh. No, no, I have <laughs> all my lights in here are RGB. So I have it hooked up to like if it's raining, snowing, if something happens in my bank account, like all these weird things. <laughs> don't have to go outside yeah uh, <laughs> i did it, it's stupid because you see my windows are right there like i just look out the window um yeah but the light alerted you let you know that it's raining out yeah <laughs> so i've always right as as i've gone through this journey with social media right i found that the the people who are the most angry seem to be the people that are the the guys who perform sometimes but they go to a lot of magic meetings it's like that range <laughs> of people okay. well i'm uh myself i performed full-time most of the, like the 70s 80s and 90s was my era and i don't buy much magic i don't buy many books most of the stuff i do is just kind of created and sure and now I don't do much of anything anymore. But some people, like you said, they love books. They love uh, yeah. making things. They like uh, collecting stuff. You know, I've got uh, some friends that do that. So I know there's all sorts of different realms. But uh, let's wrap this up a little bit. This has been very intriguing to me. It's because, uh, you know, with this whole COVID thing, I haven't seen anybody for three months, you know? Oh, yeah. Physically. You know, for a long time. I, I thought everybody was dead and the people who were texting me was Apple AI. Yeah. So I get it, man. It's been kind of <laughs> weird. So it's, it's fun to actually have a conversation like this instead of like that, that rant thing on uh, YouTube, cause it goes nowhere. It's just yeah. people from <laughs> one side or the other doing, you know, saying their thing. Yeah. So if other things come up, I'll rattle your cage and uh, we can have another conversation about some other things because it's, it's, it's some interesting things too because you know, there used to be a time when there were manufacturers and you had to be a certified dealer to be able to get this stuff. You had to get a, a, a account number and all that kind of stuff. And nowadays, like I said, you just go on the internet and buy it. And it's, yep. it's changed it a lot. It's made it to a lot of things have disappeared. I mean, retail stores, there's not a lot of them around anymore. Yeah. Bookstores too. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> everything's changed. Well, I was in the event business. I changed big time and shifted over to affiliate marketing, doing online stuff now. Cause I just got tired of trying, I, you know, I'll summarize it. I just finished with my event planners expo. That's how I used to get my leads. Right. I did an expo that brought in event planners and that built up sure. my database of people to book me. Mm -hmm. And I just finished it March 4th and I was going to go, okay, events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. Those are the things I was going to focus on. Then COVID came around March 12th. I went, Argh! everything stopped. I thought, well, now what am I going to do? Yeah. I was in so Vegas when it all pivot. happened. It's wild. Yeah, and it's so was, weird now. I mean, uh, that's another whole conversation we could have that's offside of magic is the whole conspiracy thing of masks or no masks and Democrats and Republicans. And well, the ma I'll, I'll just say this. I, I'm very big on the mask thing because I was a paramedic and a paramedic instructor and mm -hmm. I lived medicine for many years. And the concept of a mask is so simple if you totally. understand a few key things and then the argument would end. It keeps you but from spraying it all over the place. That's, basically. that's it. That's the totally. argument. But a that's lot of people it. get into it and they go in deeper in it and all of a sudden you're infringing on my rights. Well, quit spitting on me, you puke. <laughs> and so, so that's what happens. It gets so freaking yeah. weird. And then all of a sudden they go, oh, George Soros is doing this. And it's a bunch of, you know, I'm right here in Minneapolis. This was at a headquarters for a lot of that shit. Yeah, man. I just, look, I, I don't know you, but I hope we'll get to know each other better, man. This has been fun. Yeah. I and uh, please be careful out there, man. I would like to see you at some point when the world decides to start again. <laughs> it hasn't stopped for me. Well, I'm going to sign this one off, brother. And if you want to stick on, we'll talk a little bit more. But I'm going to close yeah. off the recording, and uh, then I'll cool. beam it up to the universe. So peace, love, and happiness. Appreciate you, man. Same.